Oh, there you go. It's on now? Okay. Alrighty, give it a rest. I want to talk today about um, finding rest for your soul. Or, um, you can't really be successful in anything that you do if you're not organized in it. And rest is a huge part of that. Um, people have breaks at work because um, they want to get people body time to recover so they can actually function as a person again and I find a lot of days when I don't rest uh, I'm ruining my health because uh, your your body has to have time to recover uh, at least 10 or 15 minutes so that your uh, that's okay that's good. That, no, that's good my grandson's helping me today and when I, <clears throat> when I rest at home, I take a little bit of time off. I like to go fishing with my grandsons. I don't do enough of that. Seems like I do that once in a blue moon. But um, we're going to do more of that here in about a year after I retire. Isn't that right, Caden? Mm-hmm. 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 You sound like a little goyal. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to do more of that. And, um, um, actually, Caden is a confirmed member of the He Man Woman Haters Club. Ain't you? <laughs> Come over here and let them see what that looks like. Stand right by me, right here. This is a confirmed member. He's, he has been accused of in the past of looking exactly like Alfalfa when he gets up in the morning. Okay, it's good enough. Thank you. Um, okay, now, and now I want to give you some biblical uh, examples of um, what the Bible teaches about. And it's not just uh, in the New Testament, it's in the Old Testament as well. And we're going to look in a couple different places. And I've got my little laptop here so that we can uh, look up some things as I go and I've got it set. Um, Bible Hub, by the way, is a play. You could just put down the line that's in any verse and write Bible Hub after it. And this program is really neat about uh, with helps. And it has uh, commentaries and it has uh, uh, context, cross-reference, things like that. And uh, it's, it is, you know, if, if you get a Bible, you would... Uh, with all this in it, you would pay a thousand bucks, I bet you. I don't even know if there's a Bible out there that costs that much, but I bet you'd pay some pretty money for a Bible with everything that's in this. And the first verse I want to go to is Psalm 62, 5. And I will read it in a couple different versions of the Bible. I love the King James because the King James is accurate. King James is... Um, probably the most accurate Bible that we have in English today. There's another one down here that I also like. It's called Aramaic, Aramaic Bible in plain English and I'm going to be reading those three so you'll help get you a good understanding of what it's talking about. The International Version says, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. And that's what rest does. Rest renews your hope. And let's see if that is uh, exactly what the King James says. It says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. And, uh, you, you know, if you define those words, that's, that's why I like the King James. It's got so much more. It says it's exactly the way that it talks about. My soul, wait thou only upon God. I'm, you know, that's putting the world out. That's putting the world out because uh, you, you can't rest with the world in there, you know. Wait only upon my God, for my hope comes from Him. And the Aramaic Bible says, uh, My soul looks for God, from whom is my salvation. Okay, so, and I think out of those three, King James is the most accurate there. Okay, and, 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 I, and I find this, when planning your life, 
you have to find rest uh, for your soul just like it was talking about there you have to plan the rest in there uh, some wise men knew that because that's why they made uh, came up with vacation times and all that so we have to plan our lives this is very important some people might look at this and tell me oh you need to give it a rest <laughs> well yes I do I'm gonna give it a rest here pretty soon I told my wife I said look I said when God blesses us in the fashion that I desire and he's going to because the Bible tells me he's going to give me the desires of my heart then I said the first thing I want to do is I want to take two or maybe three weeks off and do nothing I want to go I want to go lift uh, south back where I was when I was a kid a place where I can rest a place where I can feel like I don't you know I really don't need to do anything um, all I want to do is just go there just between me and God I want to lay down in the grass and look at the stars again like I did when I was a kid and dream of that glass house <laughs> you know, I don't know why I used to dream of a glass house but I did I thought uh, when I was a kid I thought wow a glass house seemed like a really neat thing mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about all the people that throw rocks but maybe it won't be a glass house this time but I'll dream about my mansion in heaven <laughs> and uh, maybe it'll be made out of diamond that way rocks can't break it you know what I mean but just get away by yourself and take some time and I hope right next to my diamond house there's a a fishing hole you know and I want to I want to be able to catch some fish that um, but I was dreaming about fish last night come to think of it I dreamed about this little fish I was teaching I was teaching my older brother how to fish I gotta figure out what this dream means now my brother he was fishing he threw in his hook with no bait and he caught a little bitty uh, and I knew he needed some bait he caught one of those little bluegill top it was about this big and uh, and the and, and the bluegill had swallowed the hook and uh, he threw the hook out there after he got because I laid, got up the line looked at it and it, it wasn't set up for catching uh, um, what was that big fish that he caught that got the big teeth it's a like a barracuda but it's in fresh water anyways I'll think of the name in a minute he threw that hook out there and this little fish it went man this thing could swim I'm telling you it up this path and you know how the weeds get in the into the sides of the lake well these little paths had been formed by fish or something I guess but this little fish he was going all over the place and this great big long northern pike that's what it was great big long northern pike man that that thing must have been uh, about three foot long and uh, saw that little uh, uh, perch or sunfish a uh, bluegill and he gets man he grabbed that thing and all of a sudden he goes zoom like this and he was trying to catch a he was trying to pull this thing in like that and um, uh, my brother I looked at my brother he was just letting the line go he just letting it go had no he's poorly prepared <laughs> poorly prepared for catching fish that's what a lot of Christians try to do they try to uh, be unprepared like you know like they don't study they don't go to church they don't get a hold of the Spirit of God and uh, thinking that they can go out and win souls when they're so poorly prepared and you just can't do that so I guess I figured out what the dream means my my older brother is very poorly prepared he is, he's going to have opportunity but he's going to be poorly prepared for it okay and they need how God's able to talk to us that way well Amos 370 said he would so and, and and a part of that even in that is is you have you you need to rest you need to find rest for your souls I'm looking down here 
And this is the way Jesus said. I love this verse in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, um, where the Lord was talking about uh, the New International Version says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And listen at the poetry in the, in the King James. He says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I just, you know, I'm, I'm in love with the King James. 23rd Psalms just would not be 23rd Psalms saying any other way. But, um, and I want to read down here the uh, uh, Aramaic. It says, Come unto me, all of you who labor and are forced to bear burdens, and I will share, uh, and I shall give you rest. And uh, uh, the King James, uh, it's a little more accurate in what it's saying because you know it's not always forced, and you still get tired. And um, uh, like you know, I am, I have a job, and I work. Um, I worked uh, over the weekend. I worked 24 overtime hours over the weekend. I was uh, one day of my one full day of my weekend. I without rest. And I tell you what, man. When I, yesterday I slept like a rock. I kid you not, man. Was I I tired? You know, the, it, there was a tornado warning until three this morning, and if the tornado had come and blew the house away, I wouldn't have known a thing about it. I'd have woke up hanging on a tree limb somewhere, and um, uh, that would have been all there was to it. Um, but uh, I love what it says here. I will find rest. And you know what? This is talking about a, a spiritual, mental rest because some people go away to get by themselves, and they have to spend two weeks uh, away from uh, the things of the world, away from their normal duties before they can even begin to um, contemplate a rest because they're so broken up on the inside. You know, I tell people that Jesus had more peace while he was hanging on the cross than most people have in their everyday lives while walking around and because because Jesus was focused on the Father's will. He was focused on the task of um, ahead of him. He was he was focused and he gave rest uh, because he knew that the Father was going to make it okay. So he didn't take a lot of weight into um, uh, overbearing weight, but he took enough thought about to get the job done. He knew what he had to do and he put all of that stress thing upon the Father because um, God is able to handle that, number one, just like we can do it on Christ today because he's able to handle it. Uh, being in his place, he's back in the throne now. He's in his place. He has taken uh, uh, upon him his his godly form, like he did in the Mount of Transfiguration, and uh, he is able to bear those things uh, along with the Father, and um, and and he's able to take care of those needs that we have now. Amen. He, and I don't know. That's a whole another whole doctrine, but but he can do it. Just take my word for it. He can do it. Okay. And we can lay those burdens on him because he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and you shall find rest unto your souls. And, uh, uh, well, don't say souls. It says, And I will give you rest. He says, He'll give you rest. So get the mental part right first, get the spiritual part right. And then go take your vacation. That's that's a way to rest. See, that's what I'm going to do. When I go out there, I don't care what's going on in this world. Because I'm just going to let that stuff in the hands of God. And uh, I'm going to let it go. And uh, and then I'll, when I come back out, then I'll begin to, to take those things up on my mind and up my ha on my heart. And sometimes I think we're just overbearing. Just get, it was way too much weight on us and um, uh, spiritually and physically as well and we just can't rest okay but but rest be, it needs to be planned in and, we, and you gotta have the right kind of rest too okay and this is how that it should be done I know I'm getting long I love you God bless thanks for joining we'll see you again next time another great message right here across in the middle ministry
turn that thing off for me, grandson. Just hit that there button. Thank you.